Hey guys, so um, originally for this week I had planned for you to do page 34 after we just did 32 and 33, but as I'm doing those notes, I just I feel like this is a lot. This is a, a really big week and I don't want to overwhelm you. So what I did is I, I dropped one of the assignments and pushing it back till next week. I'm taking that page of notes and pushing it back to next week. And I'm just gonna kinda take the homework we have and just, just expand it, make it a little bit bigger. Um, just use more of the assignment that, that is provided that I have, um, just to give you more practice with it. I don't want to rush it and make it uh, seem daunting or overwhelming because I already feel like it's getting daunting and overwhelming. So I want to make it less overwhelming. So with that said though, um, there is a problem that does pop up in that homework that we didn't really go over in our notes and I was going to show you how to do it on page 34 because it's, it's more uh, in tune with that page. but. There's things like this. The one that I'm going to show you is a basic version of it. So I want to show you that so you can see it and you don't get stuck on it in the homework. So it looks like this. You have this equation r squared equals 4 sine of 2 theta, right? Um, so the reason that this one's a little bit tough is instead of it just being sine of theta or cosine of theta, it's sine of 2 theta. So we have to address that 2 theta in thinking about what we're doing here in working through this. Okay, so with that, just open that up there. Um, I, I've got to I got to figure out then how would I uh, the symmetry for that, right? We've kind of realized that cosines have symmetry to the polar axis, while sine equations have symmetry to the theta equals pi over two axis. This one, notice that r squared right there. That r squared is kind of key to helping us here. That r squared helps us determine. Uh, whether or not it has symmetry to the pole. Because if we're testing if it has symmetry to the pole, remember what we do is we replace the r with negative r, but we leave theta as is. So, I mean, think about that. If I replace r with negative r, and we have squared, equals this exact thing that doesn't change over here, well, the r, negative r squared becomes r squared again, right? So you get the exact same thing. So check, yes. So with respects to the pole itself, this graph is symmetrical. So what that tells me is, just like with the other one, we need a graph 0 to pi. We need to find all our values from 0 to pi that we could use to solve and plot this, this uh, graph, right? If it has symmetry to the theta equals pi over 2, we do the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant. If it has symmetry with reflects to the polar coordinate, we do the first and the second quadrant. And we do the same thing for the pole. If we have the pole, we also do the first and the second quadrant. We do 0 to pi for our things. What makes this a little bit strange, though, is that we have to think about what we're plugging in, right? Um, so for my theta and my r's, let's start with 0. Like, 0 is fine because 0 is easy. Because when I plug in 0, look what happens first. So here I'm going to do 2 times 0 first to get 0. And then I say, okay, well, what's the sine of 0? Great, we know the sine of 0 is 0. And then 0 times 4 is going to give us 4. So I have 4, 0 for my first point. But then when we go to plug in our next point, that's where things get a little bit weird. right? If I just go plug in pi over 6, well, the problem is when I go and do 2 times pi over 6, I'm going to get pi over 3, which is fine. But then we're missing out on what's happening at pi over 6. So we have to think about what we could plug in here. So when would I get 2 theta to equal pi over 6? Well, that's only going to happen if I plug in for theta pi over 12, right? Pi over 12 is half of pi over 6. So I can plug in pi over 12. And when I do that, pi over 12 times 2 gives me pi over 6. The sine at pi over 6 is going to be 1 half, and a half times 4 is 2. Let's go up to our pi over 3 now. Again, if you just plug in pi over 3, it's not going to work. We have to ask ourselves, when does 2 theta equal pi over 3? Divide both sides by 2, we get theta is equal to pi over 6. So I need to know I need, no, I need to plug in pi over 6. So I plug in pi over 6 times 2 gives me pi over 3. Pi over 3, the sign is going to be radical 3 over 2. And radical 3 over 2 times 4 gives me 2 radical 3. Next, I need to plug in something that's going to give me the equivalent of pi over 2. So if I plug in pi over 2, or, or sorry, to get pi over 2, I'm going to have to plug in pi over 4, right? If I plug in pi over 4, pi over 4 times 2 is going to give me pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is positive 1. Positive 1 times 4 is 4. So again, we said we plugged in pi over 4 to get that. When I plugged in pi over 4, I got 4 as an answer. Um, 
let me let me look at that real quick. So if I go over four zero degrees. Did I do that wrong? The sine of zero. The sine of zero is zero. Zero times four is why what happened here, y'all? I hope I hope some of you all caught that ahead of me. Why why did I do that? No, that should have been zero. Okay, so then I go over four and up. Pi over four. Yep, okay, yeah. So there we go. That fixes that. So we gotta keep going. Now this is this is just pi over two, right? So now we gotta do the other side, which is when two theta equals um two pi over three. When two theta equals five pi over six, and when two theta equals pi. So ultimately, no. Again, we're going to divide these by two. So I need to plug in pi over three. Uh, I am definitely running out of some room here. So let's just do this. Uh, so if I plug in pi over three, when I plug in pi over three, pi over three times two is going to give me two pi over three. So then I know that the sine at two pi over three is going to be also radical three over two. Radical 3 over 2 times 4 gives me 2 radical 3. So we got that same number repeating now. Um, next, I need to get 5 pi over 6. Well, to do that, we divide by 2. We get 5 pi over 12. So when 2 theta equals 5 pi over 6, sine of 5 pi over 6 is going to give us 1 half. Positive 1 half times 4 is 2. So at 5 pi over 12, we get 2. And last, if we want to get pi, we're going to have to plug in pi over 2. Right? So I plug in pi over 2. Pi over 2 times 2 is pi. The sine at pi is also 0. 0 times 4 is 0. There we go. So these are the coordinates. With that, let me clear some of this out here. I would come over to this, this polar equations. Oh, do I still have this open? That would be super lovely if I did. I don't. I don't. I don't. Boo. Okay. Well, that's it. We're just going to have to draw a picture of it. Okay, we're going to do our best to illustrate what's happening here. Okay, so the first one I have to graph is a radius of 0 over 0. So I'm going to go over 0 and then rotate 0. It's going to be there. The next one is to do a radius of 2 units. And at the 2 unit mark, let's draw the circles as best as I can. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. This is not the prettiest thing that I could do, but I'm doing my best. I am doing my best. Let's change it to red for my points. There's my zero, zero. So at a radius of two, let's rotate pi over 12. Well, pi over 12 is going to be a little bit off. Like if I did this, okay, so here's here's pi over four, right? That's my 45 degree. So there's my 60 degree. There's my 30 degree. And that would be as accurate as I'm going to get right now. So I know pi over 12 is going to be right in between zero and pi over six. So that's going to be the first one. The next one says go two radical 3, and then pi over 6. So again, let's not make the mistakes I made in my first video. 2 times the square root of 3 gives me 3.46. So I know that I'm going to come out to in between 3 and 4. And if I'm in between 3 and 4, I'm going to rotate it pi over 6. So it's going to come up to here. Next, I want to go out four units and then up to pi over four. So that's this 45 degree mark here. My last three down here go two radical three again. So that's in between here. But this time we're going to go uh, pi over three for my rotation, which would be about here. I think those are a little bit off, but we're going to go for it. Then I'm going to go two and five pi over 12, which is going to be uh, right about here. And last, it's zero and the same thing. I definitely am a little bit off up here, but ultimately what it should look like is kind of like this little like petal. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of skip that point to come in here. Like that, right? Now we said this reflected over the pole, which means this thing's gonna reflect exactly over here into the same quadrant on the opposite side. So it would look like that. And that would be the representation of r squared equals 4 sine of 2 theta. So just be mindful. If you see those sine of 2 thetas or the cosine of 2 theta problems with the r squareds, that's how you're going to do that. Cool. All right. I hope that helps. Please, as always, come see me with all those wonderful questions. I want to help you. Bye, y'all.